Hello, my name is Jan Wuggenfjord. I'm from Danix. The topic of my presentation today is the receipt side scaling RSS with eBPF and QMO and VirtualNet. This presentation is, ba is uh, based on the work that was done by Andrei Milichenko and Yuri Binditovich in QMU, Linux kernel and Libvirt. So what are we going to discuss today? We will talk about what is RSS, receipt side scanning, how it's beneficial for us. We'll talk about some history of RSS and its implementation with virtual net devices and virtual net drivers. We'll talk about what is eBPF and how we can use eBPF for packet steering in virtual net. So first of all, what is RSS? Receive site scanning is one of the mechanisms to improve network device performance. The network device performance is improved by two things. So first of all, the packet processing will happen, will be distributed among different CPUs. So the processing will be parallel. And second, uh, we can have cache <coughs> localization of the networking traffic processing of specific uh, application running in the VM uh, because the packets that will be sent by the, the application, the packets that will be received up by the application could be received on the same CPU how uh, the mechanism works. So uh, when the NIC receives a packet, it will try to classify it by using some hash function and then use a hash value uh, as an index in the indirection table. And then the entry in the indirection table will receive specific queue that the packet should be processed in this queue and in, and, and in the tight CPU uh, to this queue. And of course, if we have MSI or MSI X support, then you can also interrupt assist, associate, uh, associated CPU with a specific queue. So we can have, we can see in this picture kind of a full implementation of RSS mechanism. There's packet classification, the packets are steered to different hardware queues and different hardware queues notifies different specific CPU. And then the driver handles the RX on specific, uh, uh, <clears throat> RX on the specific CPU. It will be dive in, in the in the classification itself. So again, depending on the on the packet type, uh, we <laughs> the hash function goes on the packet header. For, so for example, on uh, destination and source addresses, and then uh, the value will be used as an index in the redirection. So let's start with a history of RSS and virtual net. So why do we want to use RSS or virtual net? Uh, several reasons. So first of all, as I already mentioned, this is a mechanism to improve network performance and we want our, de uh, our device to perform <coughs> uh, as well as possible. Uh, the other thing is that we actually were forced by Microsoft to start supporting RSS in our virtual net Windows driver because for high speed devices, so that means the devices that support more than 10 gigabit per second, uh, we actually have to support RSS. So what, will, so what, was ha so what happened is actually before there was a multi queue implementation in Virtual and definitely Virtual Net, uh, we started to implement, we had a software implementation in Windows guest driver for RSS. It is very similar to RFS in Linux. And you can see in this diagram how it was implemented. So we had actually one RX weird queue. It was interrupting uh, the guest and interrupts went to specific only one CPU. Then the packet classification actually happened in the device driver and not in hardware as previously discussed. And we rescheduled the actual packet completion to the needed CPU. Okay, so at some point, uh, return that became a multi queue device. But then we had uh, a problem. Windows actually supplies us their direction table. 
So the auto steering that is currently implemented in multi in in uh, retail net with multi queue was not good enough for us because it was completely ignoring the settings by the guest. And also, uh, there are some cases. So actually, there are some cases that the auto steering worked, worked quite well, especially with the TCP. But sometimes it actually was completely missing uh, the queue or expectation of the flow uh, from the guest side. So we, what we had to do, we had to implement some kind of hybrid model. On one hand, the multi-queue auto steering was distributing packet between the, packets between the queues. But then on the guest, we, we calculated the hash again, and we checked if it's at the correct queue. If it was not the correct queue, we had to reschedule the processing to the correct queue on the guest. Uh, we also support legacy trusts. It's not so interesting today, but that was also one of the things that we did uh, <clears throat> in our implementation. So here's kind of is, here's a simplified diagram uh, of what's what's going on before uh, eBPF and before. Uh, additions to virtual net spec uh, in Windows guest driver. Okay, it's, uh, I, I, I put here only two vCPUs uh, in order for the picture not to be too convoluted, but what we can see here is, although we have several RX virt queues, still we, we are doing the packet classification in the guest and we, are still and we still might reschedule the packet processing to other CPU. So the next step was to make a virtual net device aware of the RSS settings, okay? And that's where we had virtual spec changes that were proposed and accepted uh, to have, uh, to be able to set the steering mode, to be able to pass from the device to the direction tables. And also we want the hash value that is calculated on the host side to be reported in virtual net header. Uh, this will allow us eventually not to have any inter-process interrupts due to rescheduling. And the vision is that at some point there will be no uh, extra calculation needed, not on the guest side and not on the host side, but the like, hardware will do all the heavy work. What implementation we have for this? So first of all, we implemented some kind of a software-only proof of concept in QM. And the second step was to implement uh, steering with eBPF. And before we jump to eBPF, let's go over virtual spec changes. Um, it's very important to understand how uh, the RSS in virtual net is working. So first of all, we added the capability flag. Uh, and so we have virtual net FRSS, this flag, requires multi-queue to be enabled as well. We have changes in the device configuration. So you will look at the virtual net config. There are <clears throat> three fields related to the table and hash type. And there is also control queue message that uh, can set RSS configuration. So RSS configuration can be set somewhere during the lifetime of the device and the driver. Uh, the guest can actually set it in, in uh, any moment. Uh, and another thing that uh, we changed is virtual net header. Okay, so virtual net header can now report the hash value to the guest. So now we can go and discuss eBPF. What's eBPF? eBPF is an ability to run sandboxes code in Linux kernel. This code can be uh, loaded in runtime. And nice thing about this is that you can change the code without changing the Linux kernel itself. And it can help you to implement additional functionality uh, or, <clears throat> or to make some kind of a proof uh, uh, proof of concept or a new functionality that it might take quite a long time to push to Linux kernel. Where it used, it used for security, tracing, networking, and observability. 
So how can the BPF help us? We want actually two things. So first of all, we want RSS hash calculation, and we want to have the index of the queue for each incoming packet to be done by the ABPF. And, I want, and we want the hash value in the virtual net header to be populated as well from the eBPF program. So this is something that is still work in progress. How, what, what's the magic? Uh, <clears throat> we are loading eBPF program from QMU using a specific IOCTO. And then in the TAN, in network, in the Linux kernel, in TAN device, TAN structure have a steering proc field. So this is the loaded eBPF program. And when, and if it's loaded, then the TAN select queue will actually use it in order to calculate the, the queue index. The hash population. Uh, so we want to populate the hash from eBPF, but here we have some specific issues. So first of all, uh, we implement, we added additional fields in virtual net header, but it's not enough. Actually, uh, a lot of times when we, we calculate the hash, the header still, is still uh, does not exist. So we have to keep the hash somewhere probably in SQB and copy it later to virtual net header. Uh, we have to enlarge the virtual net header in all kernel models. So this is something that is still work in progress. The initial set of patches was set, was sent to Linux kernel list, but uh, we got some reviews and they're still working on the, on the feedbacks. Uh, where you can see the eBPF program source in QMU, so under tools eBPF, uh, we use Clang to compile it. During the compilation, uh, BPF to create a skeleton and populate a skeleton.h file. And then during the QMO compilation, uh, <coughs> the eBPF program will be part of QMU. There are also some helpers to initialize the maps. The maps is some kind of a mechanism to share data between the eBPF program and kernel and user space. Uh, due to some changes in Libvirt, you have actually a little bit different implementation between what is now in QMO already uh, in, in, the, in the main branch and what's in, uh, in the patches that were recently sent to the mailing list. So the accepted implementation has actually three maps, but we'll discuss why we, we, in, in uh, the recent implementation, we have already one map in pending patches. And the configuration map actually um, has uh, all the parameters that are needed for the eBPF program to calculate the right flow. Uh, so there are supported hash flows and direction table, default queue, hash key, et cetera. How do we load the BPF program? There are two mechanisms. So one, QMO will load the function from the skeleton file that was built during the QMO build using a BPF syscall. Another way is the using eBPF helper program. So it was created in order to be used by Libvirt. And in this case, QMO will get file descriptors from Libvirt with already loaded eBPF program and mapping of the eBPF. So this part is still under review. Uh, loading eBPF is actually a tricky thing and it can fail. There are different reasons. First of all, kernel support. Okay, current solution require kernel 5.8. Uh, if you're loading from QMU, the QMU process need to have uh, process capabilities, CAP BPF and CAP net admin. A user can disable loading of the eBPF from the user space programs. Uh, and we also rely on libbpf library. To overcome some of those issues, uh, so, sorry. So in, in case of helper usage, uh, 
the problem can be a mismatch between the helper and QM. Why? Because the, we need to be sure that the mapping, the BPF mapping is the, uh, is the same and loaded from the same file. So we use a stamp as a hash of the skeletal include file. And then QMO verifies that <clears throat> the helper that is used is actually the helper that was built with this specific QMO version. What happens if for some reason we cannot use the BPF? There will be a fallback to built-in QM or SS steering. There are several, several reasons other than uh, failed loading. So it also can be triggered by live migration. And also currently, if we have hash population enabled in QM command line, then again, we will actually fall back to the built-in QM RSS steering and not use eBPF because this part of the eBPF functionality is still not implemented. So some issues with live migration. First of all, uh, we now have <clears throat> also dependency on the kernel version. So if we migrate to the host with old kernel version, then we will not be able to load eBPF. There are some other reasons as we already saw that eBPF might fail. Uh, so what will happen in this case, we will fall back to NQM or SS steering. There are some changes introduced in QM command line in order to enable uh, RSS steering and eBPF usage. And other than changes for the device, we need to be sure that the, that the multi queue is enabled for the device. And of course we have sufficient number of virtual CPUs for, uh, for each queue. So the parameters are RSS on, and in this case, uh, QM will automatically try to load eBPF. If, if it will fail, it will fall back to built-in RSS steering. Hash on uh, will try to populate hash in the virtual net header. And we can provide also file descriptors uh, from the helper, uh, from the Viber, sorry, from Viber. So some points about Libert integration. When Libert runs QMU, the QMU runs with the least possible privileges. And in order to load eBPF, we need netcap admin, so which will not be available. So in this case, we need eBPF helper that will prepare <clears throat> and load the eBPF program, uh, prepare the mapping, and then Libert could pass the file descriptors to QMU and QMU could use eBPF. Those pages are still under review, both in QMU mailing list and Libert mailing list. So what's the current status? Initial support was merged to QMU. As I mentioned, the Libert integration patches are under review and hash population by eBPF program, uh, those patches that were sent to Linux kernel, they're pending some additional work for next set of, for, for net, next set of patches. Okay, here you can find the links to the patches. So what's in the future? Uh, there are probably two uh, <clears throat> things are, that we, we look to do next. First is the packet uh, filtering for vhost uh, and other some security features that could be implemented with the BPF. Uh, thank you very much. I'm uh, here to answer your questions.